There are times when we as photographers go through periods of development where things just seem to come together, but there are also those times when we appear to stagnate, not to develop our vision or our skills, or we get stuck in a rut. This past 12 months, I've tried to challenge myself to do things a bit differently in the field, but it's only really when I've backed up the change in practice with a few developments in post-processing that I've started to see my images come to life a bit more. Often, I've had to go back and have a look at the footage that I've taken in the field so I can relive that experience and bring it to life on my screen. In this video, I'm going to share with you three editing power tools that I'm finding I'm using more frequently. I want to help you to explore when it might be appropriate to use them and demonstrate how powerful they can be when used properly. Presumptuous. That does presume, of course, that I am using them properly. Indeed. Right, without further ado, let's kick off with power tool number one, the radial filter. All of these shots here contain at least one radial filter, two of them multiple, and they use them in quite different ways. Let me explain. The first way that I'll use a radial filter is to create atmosphere. This will often be around points of light where I may need to create a slightly hazy look. For example, it might be that a bright light is just out of shot and I want to enhance its perceived effect on a scene or part of a scene. It may also be that I want to diffuse the effect of a strong light source, in this case the sun raising behind Steedley Pier. Other times I might just want to create depth by adding a radial filter in the distance somewhere. In doing this, you need to be aware that you're just enhancing what's already there, not creating something from scratch. Right, I'm going to show you how to do the radial filter for light enhancement. What I'm going to be doing is drawing the eye towards the back of this scene. Previously applied basic edits, I need to go down to this bottom right hand area here. And I'm going to click this button there. I'm looking to go for gradient. And what I'm presented as soon as I open that up is with a linear gradient. And I want to make that a radial gradient. Now I can literally pick it up with my mouse and move it around and clearly it's far too powerful, far too strong and also the tone that I've chosen here or the automatic tone doesn't actually go with the scene itself. I'm going to pick this up and I'm going to put it towards the back here where I would like to have my main radial gradient. I'm going to make sure that it is high enough so I don't have part way through the scene a hot area here. So I pick my central bit up and I move it high. I then want to make my radial gradient bigger so I can have a play with the angles. I'm going to do a really exaggerated version on this one here simply for demonstration purposes. I have set up um, a different uh, color combination here which takes that to yellow. What I'm going to do now is hit OK and I'm absolutely aware that that looks pretty dreadful. I'm then going to go to the opacity and I'm going to take it right down to somewhere between 6% and 15. Now at the moment you might be thinking I can't discern where that is. Let me switch it off and on and you'll see it. Off and on. Off and on. And it might be that that is actually too powerful, in which case I'm just going to go back and go and take that opacity down. Let's say to seven, off and on is much more subtle. Now if I think, God, that's far too big, I want to make that radial smaller, all I need to do is just to double click back onto here and then I can make it smaller and less obtrusive. This is my current version of the photo. I do feel that that radial gradient is a little obtrusive so I may go back and redo this soon. Another way that I will use radial filters is by selecting and emphasizing areas of contrast between light and dark. Now in this case, it's the edges of the hills where the sun is kissing them. Right, now let's have a look at a more zoomed in version of that shot. Again, basic edits have been applied. What I want to do is to go to filter at the top of the screen, go into camera raw filter, and that will take me through to um, a panel that my Lightroom users will also be quite familiar with the concept of. I'm going to go over to the panel on the side here. I'm going to go to the circle, the dotted circle, which means I'm masking or using localized adjustments. So I'm going to hit radial gradient 
and I'm simply going to, I'll go down here, I'm going to just make a long narrow version. I'm going to put it at the right angle. This is going to be very crudely done, chaps. I do apologize. I'm going to make it quite narrow. And I'm going to do one of two things in this case, but you can apply whatever you wish to. I'm going to up the exposure a little bit. And I'm going to up the temperature a bit as well. Now I'm going to overdo it so you can see it really quite obviously. It is going to be crude because of it. I'm going to do it also in this area here. Let's put a little new mask there. I'm going to put a radial gradient again. And I'm going to slightly lift the blacks and lift those shadows slightly as well. Might tiny do a little bit of the exposure up, not that much. And a little bit of warmth in those trees, because after all the sun is pounding on that. And let's just switch all of those three off and on. Off, on, off, on. No doubt when I show you these photos again, you'll be able to spot the radial filters from afar. Often the more subtle application is the better. Now to my power tool number two, split toning. Split toning is where you can introduce different colours to the highlights, mid-tones or shadow areas of an image, although complete whites and blacks remain unaffected. It's a powerful and transformative tool, but overuse, oh, ghastly. This image which you are seeing in Adobe Camera Raw has its basic adjustments done and I'm going to go through to colour grading. And as you can see, I can apply colors independently to my highlights, midtones, and shadows. The midtones can really dramatically end up, how do I put it delicately, causing problems. So what I would do in this image is bring some warmth into those highlights here. And I might even go to the opposite side of the color wheel with my shadows and perhaps introduce just very gently some blues. I might look at the mid-tones, but I just want to show you how exciting it can be. Mid-tones can really, really transform in a bad way as well as a good. Something you need to know, if you double click in a circle, it will take everything back to neutral. The further that you go out of a circle, the stronger the effect will be. And switching those off and on, as you can see, it's bringing warmth in. And if I'm going to my shadows here, switching those off and on. It just brings a little bit of coolness. Not everyone would like that. It is down to personal taste. If you want to switch the whole thing off and on, off, on. And now to the third and final power tool, exposure blending. In particular with reference to my passion, waterfall photography. Although it does have many other creative applications as well. I'm going to attempt a double exposure. One for the bubbles here with a very slow shutter speed. Another one for the waterfall and try and blend it in post. So now it's just a matter of trying to find the optimum position for my swirly foreground. Took a few attempts, but I did get it. And yes, I did get my butt in the water. A lot. This is the final result. Let me show you how I got there. Now, obviously what you're seeing in front of you is a final edited and merged image. I'm going to show you how I just did the merge. I start off by going to File, Scripts, Load Files into Stack. Now, if you are sensible, you'll have a folder somewhere where the two that you want to merge can be put in. Easy access makes everyone's life a lot happier. I'm going to automatically align those sources and let it work its magic. Right, we now have those into a stack. I have on the top my long exposure. I do not like at all the milkiness of this shot. I believe it was about 30 seconds. What I do like is this in front. And once I've done my merging, I'm gonna to have to work on this shot in order to bring out those swirls really nicely. Behind it, I have got my shorter shot, which clearly has a poor front. But what I do have is the detail in that waterfall, which I find an awful lot more pleasing. So what I want to do is brush through and reveal that waterfall with a texture. So I'm going to select my top shot, the one that I want to brush through. I'm going to add a layer mask. I'm going to go over to the brush, which I have over here but also just hitting B will get my brush as well. 
and I'm going to make it a little bit bigger just for demonstration purposes. I'd probably start off with a bigger brush and I would then perhaps choose to refine around my edges. I then need to make sure that I have my black box on top because that will allow me to reveal through when I go and brush as I'm about to do. So what I'm doing is just revealing through to that bottom layer so you can then see some texture coming through. I'm clearly going to need to go to a smaller brush in order to refine stuff. And what I would do as well is I keep looking back to here. I've done a poor job there as you can see. Keep looking back and checking that I haven't got any white areas left in there and that my mask is complete. I have a good old fiddle around with that and eventually I will have something like that with a bit more editing clearly. I've applied the same principle to this shot although the foreground required brushing through a shorter exposure. That way I was able to capture my little plop. I really like that bit. And this shot follows exactly the same principles that I showed you first, brushing in the texture in the fall. So let's play a quick game of Spot the Power Tool. Well, thank you for joining me today. I'm hoping that you found something useful in what I've said today for your own editing. I very much look forward to getting back out in the field and when I am, taking you with me. Take care. Mm -hmm.